naughty, naughty men. Dun, 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 dun. So. Hi. If you say New York to me, I think of New York City. But New York is actually one of the 50 states of the United States of America. And New York City is just a part of that. It's a subdivision of, of New York State. And on this trip, I had the good fortune to explore a lot of New York State. And I, I began up near Lake Erie in the Canadian border near the Great Lakes in the northwest corner of the state. I got to see Niagara Falls. I've been there once before. But if you ever get a chance to go visit the falls, Go take a look. It, it's, it's an awesome natural phenomenon, and it's really worth uh, the trip if you're, if you're able to go there. Then I got to drive through New York State, seeing the natural beauty of uh, the central part of New York State, the Adirondack Mountains, and then I wound up in the lower Catskills for a couple of days uh, in, in a town just a little bit south of Woodstock, where back in the 60s, people like Bob Dylan and other musicians, uh, well-known musicians, would go up to that area near Woodstock to, uh, to, to be in the tranquil uh, environment of, of the lower Catskill region, where they would produce music that we're all still kind of humming along to today. Um, it was a wonderful place. But again, you say New York to me, and I think of the city. I grew up in Brooklyn, I worked in Manhattan. Uh, and where I am from Brooklyn, Manhattan is simply the city. And by that we mean New York City. And it is a wonderful place to visit. It has old history, lots of uh, old history, and, and, and more recent history as well, along with wonderful architecture. Restaurants abound nightclubs, the theater district. It's a great place, my hometown. But for this video, I'm going to take you to a, uh, an off-the-beaten-path kind of place and talk a little bit about the history of New York from a pretty interesting perspective. There are thousands of New York images that are iconic, that have been in media and newspaper pictures and magazines and all sorts of things, very familiar images to many people around the world. But if you want to come to New York and find a kind of off the beaten path place and really learn the history of New York, come to a cemetery. This is the Gothic Gate of Greenwood Cemetery. It's in Brooklyn. And within this cemetery lies the history of New York City. And if you're lucky, you'll get hooked up with my friend Marge is it a, a historian and tour guide here? Our beautiful historic arches created between 1861 and 1865. Richard Upjohn and Sons Architect, John Moffat, sculptor, Belleville, New Jersey, uh, Brownstone. The three spires represent the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Center spire houses are monk parakeets that have been there for, since the 1960s. The legend has it they escaped from a crate that was going up a conveyor belt at Idlewild Airport before it was renamed JFK. And this is their first colony. They are all they are at Brooklyn College. They're, they have various colonies throughout New York City. So let me talk to you about Rocco Agaglia. He had a lot. He had several sons and one of the sons was in the mob. And one of them is interred in there. So now, one of the things they did to, to, to as, a, as a, you know, to defame the monument, they broke the thumb off the angel, both thumbs. This is a symbol of disrespect. So they broke her thumbs. She's quite the angel. So here we have Do Hum Me. A lot of people say me, but because the Sac Indians were here, they corrected me. So they said Do Hum Me. You notice there's a period. Anytime there's a period, a lot of people ask me about that. Well, a period is end of sentence, end of life. So the, there's so many different funerary symbols in, in all of agreement. So daughter of Nanush Roshito, a chief, which they spelled wrong because he was an Italian sculptor, of Sac Indians. And in this depiction right here, 
is her husband, Cal Hick Key, who is very in a state of mourning, forlorn, crying. So a Delhame, wife of Cal Hick Key, a young warrior of the Iowas. And on this side, it just said she died in New York, March 9th, 1843, aged 18 years. And there's a lovely poem. So here's the story. As America is forging west and taking the land away from our indigenous people, <coughs> they are either have the opportunity of going on a reservation or you, I don't have to tell you what happens. So it wasn't, it wasn't such a nice time in America. And so they decided to, <coughs> to uh, have a peace, a treaty with America to go on a reservation. It took place in um, uh, all places of Hackensack, New Jersey. So the father, along with his daughter and the son-in-law, go to Hackensack to sign these papers. P.T. Barnum, who had an establishment on Broadway, uh, said, ooh, Native American Indians <coughs> so close by, because you know, in New York City, where we've been established for quite a long time. There's no more natives here anymore. He said, ooh, I would love to have them come into my establishment and have her do the Indian dancing, wedding dances. They had, they had dancing for everything. The word gets over to them, sends a telegraph, and requesting them to come over to New York City to perform in his, you know, Barnum's, uh, you know, establishment. It was on Broadway downtown near Wall Street, where everything was at the time. She comes to New York and she, she be, everybody loved her. And of course, society loved her even more. You know, she was this beautiful 18-year-old girl and she would do all the storytelling and the dancing and then all of a sudden she, she got very sick and ill and within two weeks she died. Now the father and the husband are out of their minds in grief. And so they could not give her a Indian burial ceremony. Greenwood Cemetery, on the other hand, said, an Indian princess? <laughs> we will give her a free burial. Just, don't worry, we will bury her in Greenwood. You see, Greenwood, 1843, we were established in 1838. So we're still a very young cemetery. And, and anybody famous that's coming in, especially a Native American, um, bring more tourism in here. And when you have tourism, you have people that are going to buy. See, there's always a, it's an upsell. William Nipple, 1852. 1852 is when his wife passed away. He builds this enormous a theater called Niblo's Gardens. On, of course, everything is Broadway. I think it was Broadway and maybe Prince Street. And so I could be wrong about the, the Cross Street, but it definitely was on Broadway. He brings in the first Broadway show, which was called The Black Crook. It's nothing to do with the color of anybody's skin. It was just the title of a big extravaganza that lasted for five months hours. Another one was Millie Cavendish, the diva of Broadway, who would sing in a little baby voice, you naughty, naughty men. And then and, and to get all the men excited. Then you had women in flesh-colored tights and bloomers. So in the 19th century, you know, we wore our dresses up to our neck and our dresses down to our feet. So women with, let's say they had tights like this, but bloomers, Dun, 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 dun. So this was like a big racy, <laughs> racy thing for the men. They were gawking at these women like, look at their legs. They never seen women's legs. So he had this great, great um, Broadway um, theater and show. It's very popular. And he decides now I'm gonna retire. And he bills this for his wife. And he says, you know what? He spends his days on Manhattan Island. Brooklyn is its own city till 1898. So he jumps on a ferry, gets on the horse and buggy, and he comes to Greenwood and he spends his entire day. He spent most of his days here. Tranquil trees, the lake. There was no Central Park yet. Nothing like that yet. So one night he never came home. 
and the family, of course, we don't have phones yet. We don't have no form of communication. They are, what happened to daddy? You know, the, the children. And we don't know. We have to wait until daybreak. And then they get on the ferry and they're galloping on, on horses. Cemetery, they come in. They get up there. They're ripping the door open. And he has a lounge chair in there. And he sleep. Oh, he says, I fell asleep. He said, ah. He said, I figured, let me, let me just, I'll spend the night instead of racing to get the ferry. Here lies William Poole, also known Bill the Butcher, shot on February 25th, 1855 at Stanwix Hall on Broadway. He dies of his wounds on March 8th, 1855 at the age of 33 years and eight months. Goodbye, boys, I die a true American. Remember, those are his last words, especially like in the movie. The place whereupon thou stand at this holy ground, Glory to the memory of our first national heroes who fought and fell on this battleground to win our liberty and independence. Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, glory, and patriotism, here salutes the goddess of liberty and in reads this altar in tribute to the heroes of American liberty and to the wisdom of American institutions. And Minerva, if you look in this direction, she's in a direct surveyor's line to the Statue of Liberty. So Mr. Higgins brought in a surveyor just like we saw today, some surveyors, and they lined her up, and she's in a complete beeline to the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was given to us as a gift from France in 1886. So the Statue of Liberty is first, and now she's second. And here is the question that we ask all the time. How come the Statue of Liberty is facing the battlefield? We have no documentation. So is that a coincidence, or did they really know that the first battle of the American Revolution, after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, because there were fights going on but before that in Massachusetts, the Boston Massacre, the Boston Tea Party, all that kind of stuff. But it's starting to come east, starting to come west, I'm sorry. And so we don't know why. There's no documentation to state when they positioned, it could have faced the Narrows, where all the immigration and the boats are coming in. It could have faced Manhattan Island. It could have faced New Jersey, right behind it. But it faces the battlefield. So Mr. Higgins took advantage of that. But until we find precise documentation, it's legend that it's facing in this direction. But we don't think it, you know, until we find something. It's probably behind somebody's picture hanging on a wall in somebody's house. So I find it interesting that when I was looking for a place quiet enough to, uh, to shoot a video, to do a little bit of a narration for the many different clips that I had taken, taken for this video, I wound up once again in a, in a cemetery. I'm sitting in the, uh, the cemetery, the courtyard of Trinity Church. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I am heading back to Bangkok tomorrow, a long flight back. And we'll be doing more Thailand, you know, videos out of Thailand and other places in Southeast Asia soon. Uh, it's nice to be back on the road and traveling again. If you're still watching, thanks for being here, and I'll see you. I'll see you soon.